as we think about this idea of being light in the darkness, it strikes me uh, that light exists in contrast, right, to the to the darkness around it, and, and so many of the images that Jesus gives of what it means to be the body of Christ are um, salt and yeast and these beautiful small things that just kind of season and infect the world with love and um, e even uh, the the mustard seed which was l a little plant but was it was an invasive species so when he says the kingdom of God is like this it's like you, you're you're subtly and beautifully spreading uh, God's love into the world but what what strikes me too is that the, the, the church is meant to be a bit of a contrast to the world we live in. As my brother, my, my friend Stanley Hauerwas says, um, the church is kind of meant to be like air fresheners in the toilet. We're meant to leave off the fragrance of Jesus in, in this world. One of the challenges in the United States, I think, is that uh, uh, we've, we've sp spread everything and branded everything with Christianity so much that it almost loses its essence. Uh, as Kierkegaard said, where everything is Christian, nothing is Christian. Because we lose that distinctiveness of what it means to be God's holy counterculture in the world. So when in the U.S. our money says, in God we trust, <laughs> it's like the, the quintessential uh, using of God's name in vain. Um, and and it's, it's like, you know, with a disease, you create a vaccine by kind of making a watered down version of it. And I think one of the dangers in the world is offering the world a watered down version of Christianity that some people become kind of inoculated. So many folks in the U.S., they say that they've rejected Christianity, but they've really just rejected a version of American nationalism that's camouflaging itself as Christianity, but it doesn't look or smell like Jesus. So I want to give you one final little image of what it looks like to be uh, the people of God in the world. And it's a, it's a little story from my grandfather who uh, was a farmer. And uh, this one particular week, they had gotten a new truck and trailer and we were bailing hay. And so uh, he's like, we're going to break this new truck in, you know. So we start piling the hay bales and stacking them higher and higher and higher on the truck until it's just this tower of hay. And then when you couldn't get another one on it, like my, my grandfather said, all right, that'll work. And they hit the road. My uncle was driving the truck. My grandfather's riding on the passenger side. And as they're driving along, what they didn't notice is that the tire, there was so much hay that the, the, the weight of it was rubbing on the tire. And so, you know, it got hotter and hotter and uh, caught fire. And then the hay began to catch on fire uh, and spread. And so there is just this blazing inferno driving down the highway in East Tennessee. And cars are waving at them, you know, and my uncle's nodding back. We're real friendly down south. And then eventually, though, he looked in the mirror and saw the fire. And he's like, oh, my gosh. And his first impulse, I'm not sure why, but it was to stop and pull over, you know. So they pull the truck over, and now all of that fire was beginning to melt the back of the truck. So he's like, okay, we can't stop. We got to keep going. So they get back on the road and all the fire, you know, just blazing behind him. And he starts shaking the truck in order to, you know, get the hay bales, the fire to get off. And, but what happened was it started catching a few fields on fire and stuff. So they're being followed by fire trucks who literally, you know, got things under control. Thank God. And then eventually, uh, uh, after my, uncle and grandfather got out of jail. I'm just kidding. They didn't go to jail. But they, they said to me that week, they said, Shane, we caught half of East Tennessee on fire. And as I thought of that, it occurred to me, isn't that what it should look like, right? Not, not that we should be pyromaniacs, but that we should leave a trail of God's love behind us. That is, is just as Jesus said, uh, uh, tell John what you see and hear that we should be able to, to leave that same love, that essence of Jesus in the world that we live in. So that a generation from now, um, I hope and I pray when people hear the word Christian, 
they don't say anti-gay, judgmental, hypocritical, prudish, irrelevant, but they say love. They say love. May it be so. So, got a little something for you here. It's a little special. You know, we've been, Katie and I have been trying to do some magic tricks and circus stuff to mix things up a little bit. So, this is a, a little image of, of what it might look like to shine in the darkness. We're, we're just imagining that candle as the love of Jesus, the fire of God in the world. And we pray that it would hold, catch hold of us. And let's take that love into the world. Amen. Love y'all. See you, Proximity.